Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I don't normally come into the chambers for public hearings. Because I'm, you know, this, this is not what I do, you know. Um, but this particular issue, this whole gun violence issue, uh, is, is beyond the point where it is extremely troubling to everyone, not only us, but people in the community, or people outside of the community. Um, you know, we talk and we move through our neighborhoods and, and you all can, can understand the conversation that you get outside of this particular chamber, outside of the media, um, when you're talking to real people, real people that are not necessarily advocates, but just the average person on the street. And they have a very candid conversation with you about the concerns, the concerns about walking to the store, the concerns about their child being able to come home from school safe, the concerns about their child uh, being able to go to a recreation center and come back home that night. Um, it is at a point now where those of us who have responsibility for coming up with solutions, in all honesty, we just kind of shake our head and say, I don't know what to do. I mean, it's that level of concern out here. And some of these shootings, I mean, are just so horrific. I mean, people, you know, that are doing some of the things that they're doing is just beyond belief. And I mean, and I want to commend um, my colleagues, um, particularly those of us who have been very, very forthright in terms of dealing with gun violence in the criminal justice system generally. Um, this council has probably been um, one of the most progressive councils in dealing with criminal justice reform, uh, enacting uh, various initiatives along with the mayor um, to make sure that people get second and third chances, make sure that there are opportunities for individuals um, to be a productive citizen in our city. Um, no cash bail, all of those types of things that uh, we think we need to do to make sure there's an equitable application of justice because we know that the reality is that it's not equitable. I mean, it goes all the way back to the conversation that we're currently having, this issue around uh, opioids and how the response is to opioids versus how the response was to crack cocaine and when it ruined our neighborhoods and it you know, basically changed the lives of not only individuals in neighborhoods but in the, in the entire neighborhood in the city. Um, it was a different response, so yes, we do need to make sure that there's an equitable application as it relates to uh, our criminal justice center system. But there is, as I said earlier, this conversation is happening out in the streets to the everyday average citizen where they say, you guys have to do something. And I'm talking about gun violence, and which is why I'm you know, happy to be here today to talk about real solutions, real solutions about getting guns off the street. There are all kinds of different issues, uh, all types of different categories of crime, but there's always one underlying issue, the availability of weapons. Um, so I'm glad to see that we're pushing this agenda again, and we'll always get pushed back from the state because for whatever reason, they don't think that we should determine our own destiny, and I just clearly don't understand that when we're simply talking about creating a safe environment for our people. Um, but we're gonna do what we have to do. Um, then there is another issue that some people don't need to be on the street. And I know I'm going to get in trouble, you know, I'm just, but I'm going to always say what I got to say because people send me down here because I represent the 22nd Police District where we have um, this unfortunate designation of having some of the most uh, significant shootings um, in the city where the city has put in all types of initiatives to tamp down the violence. And there are some people who, for whatever reason, don't feel that they want to be members of our society because they will go out and shoot a crowd of people at a rec center. They will go out and shoot a crowd of people on a center. They will go out and shoot a young child in a household, right, because of whatever's going on in their mind. So we, as we deal with all of the other things relating to a criminal justice reform, as we deal with all the issues, making sure that there are genuine opportunities for people to have uh, the ability to move forward in their lives. We do need to deal with this issue with respects to law enforcement, all right? And I'm just calling it like it is. I had a conversation as recent as last night. And somebody told me, Daryl, there are a couple of guys in our neighborhood, and I'm not gonna say exactly where, 
but it was along the Cumberland Street corner, and yes, I'm saying it, right, where all they do is wreak havoc in that neighborhood. And it's not right. They should not be able to hold an entire community hostage. So to my colleagues and, and everybody here, and you wouldn't be here if you didn't really care about it, it's time for us to you know, do what we need to do to make sure that we have a safe environment because we cannot have a situation where people can't uh, enjoy in, 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 in their communities, their rec centers, their neighborhoods, and all of the things that we fought hard for to ensure that we have in the city of Philadelphia. So, so councilmen and members of the committee, I just want to thank you all so much for your due diligence in making sure that uh, we push hard uh, to ensure that our, we had a quality of life in our neighborhoods that we so deserve. So thank you, and with that, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. Thank you, Mr. President.